warning you, this case is disturbing. So some of you might not want to watch. I'm going to point out and address Shonda's tactics. The defense made her memory an issue. I'm going to talk about that as a tactic and ways to deal with it when it is a tactic and the counter argument to it in this and many other criminal cases. She worked in law. So she knows she won't get away with certain things. She won't get away with outright denying facts in the face of video evidence and the text evidence. And she knows what perjury is. And it's not that she cares about the truth. She cares about the consequences to herself. If I seem angry at times going through this, please understand it is not directed at you. And the things that get me every time the things you never get used to are things that involve harm to children and animals. And it's all so much worse when the person doing the harm is the person who is supposed to love and protect that child. This creature who calls herself a mother does not deserve that title. Now, uh, Mr. Johnson uh, kind of tried to shortchange you a little bit. Earlier in your cross area in his direct examination, when he wanted to talk about your background, uh, your schooling, um, remind the jury again of your educational background. Um, I have a bachelor of science degree, magna cum laude, and then I also have a juris doctorate, it's a law degree that I graduated magna cum laude second in my class. And uh, magna cum laude, for those that might not be familiar, means with the highest honors, correct? She took the bait. When opposing counsel builds up your intelligence or your expertise, you know something's coming. You know they have a plan for how they're going to use that. Yes, sir. In law school, actually, SUMA only goes to number one. In, in, at the college level, you, it's above a certain GPA, but for law school, only number one gets SUMA, and then above a certain GPA gets magna. And then she really did work in the court. So somebody would have had to have checked to verify her credentials. At least I assume so. If that wasn't the case, I would think she's lying right here. Look at the change in expression. But then it changes to this for a fraction of a second. He goes on a bit more and builds her up, then switches gears to this. And remind the jury again, how many children do you actually have? I have five total. Okay. And go, if, again, we're not going to name the youngest, youngest little man, I think. Little man, yes. Um, Nolan is 23 and married. Um, Paul is 21 now. Millie, my only daughter, is 19. She's in college in Oklahoma, as far as I know. As far as I know. Um, I haven't talked to her in a long time. Um, Timothy was, he would be 17. He was 15, a month, a month shy of 16. And then little man just turned nine in September. And um, with the exception of Timothy, no harm has come to your children in terms of them you know, dying as a result of malnutrition and starvation, has it? No, not at all. Dehydration, hypothermia? No, sir. None, none of those inflicted on any of your other children? No, sir. They're all healthy. He's going here because the defense brought it up. You see this in DV and SA cases where the accused says, look, ask all my female friends. I've never assaulted any of them. The answer to that is so what? Just because you didn't commit all the crimes at every opportunity doesn't mean you didn't commit this crime. And in this case, that none of her other children received this treatment, if that's true, and we don't know. I suspect it's not. That makes it worse because that means two things. It means, A, she knows better. She knows it's wrong. She knows how to take care of a child and that she singled this one out. That goes to intention. If this was a case of her simply not knowing any better, you would expect to see horror on her face when she realizes. You would expect to see shame. And you would expect that all of her other children have been treated in the same way. And you would expect her not to have gone to such great lengths to hide it. So she knew better and she chose to inflict the horrors that she did on this one individual. Next, he gets her to confirm that she had the ability to take photos of Timothy, yet she had no photos of him. He seems to not go anywhere with that yet, so we're going to just skip ahead. He's going to ask her about her health issues because the defense made it sound like it was some sort of an excuse. But the defense did not bring in any expert or proof 
of any diagnosis or anything else other than her word to explain why these issues of her health might somehow be mitigating. And it's important that the defense did not do this. Why didn't they do that? Because there is no excuse. Let's talk about some of your health issues because we listed quite uh, quite a few issues that, that were in terms of your diagnosis and health issues that you had. Um, I think you said ADHD, um, something called sensory processing disorder. OCD. OCD. Um, those, those PTSD. PTSD. I, I would, I guess I would kind of classify those more as almost, I don't want to use, I'm not using this word in a negative context, because those are almost more mental disorders. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I, I agree with that. Right. You also had some physical disabilities as well. Yes, sir. And I, I don't know if Mr. Johnson went into those, so why don't you tell the jury what your physical disorders are as well? I have um, allergy-induced asthma. I am allergic to almost everything environmental other than animals, every different type of pollen and mold and, and weeds. And then I am a reactive hypoglycemic. Um, I have been my whole life, but it was actually after Timothy was born. It got much worse. Why do you suppose she injected that bit about how it got worse after Timothy was born? It was superfluous information to answer the question, but important enough to her in her mind that she needed to inject that. It's a subtle way to blame the child for her problems, for her stresses, for her decisions, and for her horrible behavior. It's a way to plant that seed into the minds of the listener. I've spoken before about taking the victim stance, and this is an example. It's not an in-your-face example. She says it in passing, like it's just part of the conversation, but she injects it, and that is what she's doing. And um, they finally figured out right after I moved here why it, I mean, what was going on but it required, I can eat, and my blood sugar will still crash. So I can pass out, I can be doing whatever and just pass out. So and if I'm not mistaken, you actually eat, the, I, had, I had the opportunity to meet a very, very nice, but very large dog. You had a service animal when you worked here, didn't you? Yes, sir, I did. Gemini. Gemini, yes. And Gemini's function as your service dog was, was what? He was set trained to pick up the, your blood sugar smell. Um, if you've ever been around a diabetic, when their sugar's high enough, they put off this hubba bubba bubblicious smell. Well, we, as humans, we can't pick up the low blood sugar smell, but a dog can actually pick up your sugar going up about 20 minutes before we can, and they can pick up the low blood sugar. So he was scent trained. He would let me know when my sugar was about to crash, so I always carried orange juice with me, and that would keep my blood sugar up for two and a half to three hours guaranteed. And then he was also trained, if I ignored his alert, and this did happen at work a couple of times, um, he was trained, he was off leash. He was trying to go and get somebody to bring them to me to make sure I took care of it so I didn't pass out. He let her get away with that big explanation there. He didn't have to, but he is choosing when and where to push. This is all a big dance. The subito crescendo is coming up. Um, it's just remarkable that dogs can do that. It's just it an aside. Um, and was Gemini the first service dog you had? No, on? sir. He was my second. Okay, and so you had one before Gemini, okay. and then... One after. Then one after, and that was Sharma? Was Sharma, that right? yes, sir. He was another Great Dane. Another Great Dane, okay. I um, like the big dogs. So you are certainly, you are keenly aware of your health issues and the things that you need to do to address your health issues, right? At times. I don't take great care of myself, I will admit that. There's the boom, and she rolls with it. She's practiced and quick on her feet. She knows that arguing won't look good, so she uses a different tactic. I admit, she admits to something that could actually make her appear to have a virtue, such as being a hard worker. The admission is self-serving. And, and the fallback to that is you have a dog that will it alert does. you if your blood sugar gets yes. low. Yes, yeah. So you understand that if, so you have a backup plan. Where was the backup plan for her child? Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. So if, if, if I forget to eat or my blood sugar gets too low, then my dog is going to alert me to that, so I've, so I've got a backup plan, yes, right? Yes, sir. But you understand the how that works. You understand yes, the medical need to, to have those things treated. Right? Yes, sir. And the need to have your other issues that we talk about get treatment for those issues as well, don't you? Yes, sir. Um, sensory processing disorder involves basically overstimulation, right? Yes, sir. And you suffer from 
it's a disorder which causes you to become overstimulated with what audio and visual stimuli, correct? It's, it's, that's part of it, yes, sir. It can be stress related as well. But as a punishment for your child, you decided that hot sauce, audio alarms, cold, cold. We'll get into this later, but cold, at least cold, if not ice baths, and isolation and sensory deprivation were appropriate means of punishment. Is that is that your testimony? Those yes, are appropriate sir. forms of punishment. For some of it, yes, sir. She just admitted to CA. Obviously, none of these punishments are appropriate for anything. So why is she so calm and cool about it? She's normalizing it. That normalization messes with the heads of victims and bystanders alike. Imagine how much worse it is if you are a child. The anguish that this child suffered is much more than physical. And imagine growing up in an environment where all of this is normalized. We've had a lot of, there's a lot of text messages. We had a lot of testimony from Paul yesterday and a lot of photographs about Timothy's small room. Um, that was basically like a crate, wasn't it? I don't, I don't believe it was that enclosed, but he, he asked for a space that he could close the door. It's not me. It's not my fault. He asked for that. That's what she's implying. He asked for a place where he could close the door. He wanted privacy. He's 15. Instead, he got locked into a closet with a camera on him. No privacy. Bound with zip ties and leg shackles. Throughout this, she will use a tactic that you've seen before. That is to explain all of the elements of what happened individually and separately and to blame the victim or somebody else for each element and hope that nobody sits back and looks at the whole picture or the cumulative impact. But she understood the cumulative effect. This was calculated and systematic. He asked to go in, into that? He asked for a he, he asked for somewhere he could, um, some place he can go in and close the door. And it was actually half joking. I was like, that's all I've got because the other rooms were taken and I, there was no way he was sharing with Paul and I didn't really want to share him with Little man, either. But you didn't set that, that up as a room for him, did you? Not originally. No, he was actually out in the the lower area for a while. But you didn't. You didn't put a bed in there. You didn't put we a mattress did originally, in yes. there. He tore it up. Okay, but there but there was no mattress, nothing of comfort for there in him the day before he died, was it? Not that day. No, he had torn it up. I couldn't afford to get another one. You put a you put a blue tarp in there, didn't you? It was on. That was what was on the mattress previously. Yes. And the tarp was because he would wet himself. Yes, sir. Because he, I tried the mattress covers, I tried plastic, I tried some rewashable, and he kept tearing them up. So his place of comfort was a closet with a blue tarp. Is that what you, is that what you want the story to believe? He spent some time there. I wouldn't say that was a place of comfort. I mean, spent some was, time there. Well, let's get into that. He slept in there most nights, didn't he? After, I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't know when exactly it was. I mean, I know it was after my husband's stroke. I don't know when after that. But um, once he'd asked for that, yes, he did spent some time she's minimizing and blaming the victim again. Classic tactics. After the husband's stroke is something that comes up a few times. And the implication is that she was so stressed and burdened after this that it somehow justified or mitigated what she did. I think that once the husband was out of the house, there was nobody to question her behavior. In, in fact, he rarely even slept on his bed, did he? Um, he had taken the bed apart and lost some of the bolts. I couldn't, it wasn't safe for him to sleep up there. So, so the bed that we see in those pictures, it wasn't even safe to be used? No. So it was a complete lie when you told the police officers that you had to pull him off the bed to put him on the ground to do CPR, wasn't it? Yes. And it was a complete lie when you told 911, I need to put you on hold so I can take him off the bed to perform CPR, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I don't even remember. So that. in all your days, all your confusion, all your blacking out, tunnel vision, all that, you, you were able to somehow remember. I, I ought to tell everybody that Timothy was sleeping on bed. Remember doing that? Vaguely, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Have you ever given hot sauce to the dogs, to train the dogs? Um, I have put it on a couple of objects to keep them off of objects, yes. Keeps actually. them keeps them away from it, right? Yes, it does. Right, because they don't want to eat the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you would, so you never actually 
grabbed a dog, forced its mouth open, and poured hot sauce down its throat. Have you? No. Never put bread, put hot sauce on a piece of food and then fed it to them, make them eat it. Have you? No, because I don't give my dogs human food. You can't do that with service animals. Deflect and redirect away from what she knows his point is. Have you ever talked to somebody like that? Frustrating, isn't it? She knows he's showing how she did something to her child that she would not do with a dog. That it's obvious that such a thing is cruel and not effective punishment. But she effortlessly glides into arguing something other than his point. That she didn't even have to think about it tells me she's practiced at this. I bet you that in her personal life, she's a major gaslighter and con. Just my opinion there. No, but you could put it on dog food, didn't you? I guess. I've never even thought about that, honestly. So it never occurred to you to use hot sauce, enforcing the use of hot sauce on a dog, but it occurred to you to use that as a form of punishment for your 14-year-old child? It, it was Paul's idea, but yes, it, I was at my wit's end at, the, at that time. Blaming someone else and victim stance at my wit's end. And the person she blames is her other child. Who's the parent here? Whose responsibility is it to make sure her child is cared for? And in blaming her other child, she's essentially admitting to spousification, which is also damaging. Now, given his age, I mean, maybe that's arguable. You'll have to talk to a therapist. But if she's doing it now, if the pattern is established at the point at which we're able to see, what's to make anybody think that that wasn't going on before? Four. It was Paul's idea, and you thought, yep, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I think we'll do that. Is that what you're saying? I don't remember the exact conversation, but I said, it, like I said, at that point, I was willing to try anything. I was. We'll get into the text, but there's yeah. dozens of texts in here, and this is just a small section of text where you tell Paul, put more hot sauce on the bread. Give him four slices of hot sauce. Don't, do you remember those text messages? Some of them. Not very many, but some of them. Mm -hmm. Now she's going to go to not remembering. Did you hear the prosecutor say, mm-hmm? The I don't remember tactic gets used a lot by offenders. You might hear an offender say, I blacked out. I, I, I don't remember anything. Well, if you don't remember any of it, how can you say you did not do it? For her to say she doesn't remember the text is simply a way for her to throw mud in the water. Let's say, for the sake of argument, she really doesn't remember any of these texts. I don't believe her, but let's just say, does that mean she didn't write them? Does that mean she didn't do the things that she did? No. It means she doesn't remember it now when she actually is called to account. And the lack of remembering sending the text doesn't go to intent. When you consider the mental element, what you have to look at is at the time of the crime, not later. Not remembering now does not mean she had no intent at the time of the offense. So you wouldn't punish a dog with hot sauce, but it's okay to punish a child with it. Objection. I'll move on. <laughs> Would you stick a dog in an ice bath as punishment? I, it, that would never occur to me. But then having big dogs, you don't. I don't bathe them at home anyway. Again, intentionally missing the point and redirecting. I use dry shampoo, or then I or I take them somewhere else. I, I don't. Uh, have I'm talking about a form of. I'm not talking about giving them a bath. I'm talking about using. I don't have as space. A form of punishment. Putting a dog in a nice bath. I don't have space to do that, so I, I wouldn't think of that because I don't have space with that size dog. If it wasn't already clear that missing his point was intentional, it's clear now. And if anyone wants to claim, but she has processing problems, I remind you that earlier she said her processing problems are related to sensory input and is not an ability to process language or concepts. And look at her expression here. She's not happy with where he's going, not unaware. You're saying if you had a large enough tub to punish one of the dogs, you'd put him, put him in a nice bath? I can't, I mean, I can't imagine doing that, but... You can't imagine doing that. Right? Correct. You can't imagine punishing an animal by putting him in a nice bath. Because 
Animals can't think the same way humans can. Suggesting that it would be okay? Still trying to redirect. But now she's forced to somewhat address his point. And what does she do? She's just basically justifying and normalizing. So it's okay to do it on a human because they can think, right? They can they can think better than dogs can, so it's okay to put them in an ice bag. Is that what your testimony is? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Translation. I need another second to think. Is it okay to put a human in an ice bath because they can think better than dogs can, but you wouldn't do it to a dog? I mean, based on the way you asked that, I guess the answer would have to be yes, but it's just a, it's not the way I think. So I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but you said you wouldn't do it for a dog. Now she's implying that whatever her answer is, whatever she says next, is going to be the prosecutor's fault and therefore not really valid based on the way you said that, she says. And she throws in, I don't think like that. Yet clearly she does. She did that repeatedly. But oh no, she doesn't think like that. It's the prosecutor who's thinking like that. Well, we know you did it as a punishment. I never, I never did personally. This woman can't get through an exchange without using a tactic, without playing a game, blaming somebody else again. Her own child. Who is the parent? Who had the power? But you told Paul to do it. Um, yes. A couple of times. And it never occurred to you, this is not a good idea. We shouldn't be doing this, right? No. Because it was, the, um, the amount of ice was almost, I mean, it was non-existent, so... Minimization, classic tactic of offenders, if it wasn't that bad, or the amount of ice was almost non-existent, then it's not a punishment. Later, she comes up with a different reason for putting ice in his bath. That's another tactic. They hope that you'll forget the excuse that they gave before. Remember Letitia Stouck and all her stories? And or they'll switch their excuses to suit what they need in the moment. So it's okay as long as it's not a lot of ice in the ice bath? Is that your testimony? If it doesn't affect the temperature much. It starts off as cold anyway, doesn't it? Um, not originally. I don't know down the road, but originally I did, that's not what, what I had told him to do. Because the original time, the first time that happened, was before my husband's stroke. It was, Timothy had, um, the, we, we noticed there was no hot water. And we were like, what the heck? And I went down and I'm looking and I noticed the pilot light's not on on water. It's a gas water heater. I'm like, what on earth is going this on? This ends with Timothy turning off the gas, doesn't it? Redirect and blame the victim. We're supposed to focus on this story she's telling and how bad the victim is. I am so sick of adults vilifying and blaming children for the decisions and the vile behavior of the adults. Who is the parent? Uh, this, yes, sir. This part of the story. Okay. And he let, lied about let, it for let, two let, days. But let, let me just make okay. sure I understand. Then is, is is it your testimony that you put ice in an otherwise hot bath to cool it down? Yes. She just described there was no hot water, but she's going to go with what he's saying there. Anything to move away from the awful truth of what she did. Why don't you just start with warm water to begin with? I honestly don't know, that, but that's what that what happened the first time. So if you repeatedly refer in these text messages to them as cold and or ice baths, but that's what it was at the end, wasn't it? Cold baths or ice baths, at right? At the end, yes, sir, but not the first time. Not the first time. You, you apparently needed ice to cool down hot. I have bath. no idea what I was thinking. I was... We'd, ha we'd all had to have cold showers for two days, and he'd lied to us about the water heater and had to have the gas company out. Back to vilifying the victim for no reason that's relevant to what was actually asked. And she's sure to throw in there how they all suffered because of this boy, as if that somehow justifies the evil that she did. You remember taking the law school exam test? The LSAT? The LSAT? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I hated that test. Oh, I did too. Yeah, I agree with you there. There's a section on there that's about logic and reasoning, right? Yes, sir. And I kind of explained it to my friends as it's the 
you know, so-and-so can't next to so -and -so, sit next to so-and-so at a party, and this person can't sit on this side of the table, and this, so, you, so you have to map out all those things, right? Yes, sir. I'm guessing you scored pretty high on the LSAT, didn't you? I, I, I scored pretty well. I mean, I got a scholarship to law school, so. So for a test that serves your interest for getting into law school, you have no problem using logic and reason, do you? I mean, I managed to score on, I, I hated that test. I know I, I did not miss a single, um, there's a, a logic games section. I think I missed one question on that out of 25. And I think the reading comprehension was also something like that. So I think the lowest score was actually on the logical reasoning. She's super smart when it serves her and suddenly not as smart if it serves her not to be. And yet somewhere before the time your husband had a stroke, logic told you that you should use ice in a hot, is that, is that your testimony? Yes, sir. But then after that, you do acknowledge that it was cold and or ice mass. Yes, sir. And that you encouraged Paul to pour water on Timothy, didn't you? Just the one day. Just the one day? So it's okay then? Well, Your Honor, I only robbed one bank. So it's okay, right? Except here we're talking about a young human being over which she had power and control. Just the one day? Yes, sir. Which day was that? The day before he passed away. Now, Mr. Johnson asked you some questions about uh, homeschooling and not ever taking Timothy to a doctor. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And I think you said that the reason you couldn't do that is because you couldn't get your ex-husband to help you out with signing over custody. Do you remember that? Correct. Yes, sir. This woman worked at the courthouse. She went through law school. For the average person, figuring out what forms you need and how to go about filing things can be quite a challenge, but ordinary people manage to do it. But she knows how to do it, and she knows how to get help with all that. She knows how to navigate the system. She knows what needs to be done and how to do it, but she did not. There's a reason for that, and the prosecutor is going to expose that now. The truth is, you were, by court order, not allowed to have custody of Timothy, weren't you? That's correct, but I was offered the option of either taking him or they were going to put him in foster care. Remember earlier, it was pointed out that she had other children, and none of them lost her lives as a result of her actions. She left out that she was not allowed to be in a parenting position over Timothy. Not only that, even if she just wanted to visit him, the visits were required to be supervised. The court doesn't impose such restrictions on a parent for no reason. And all this happened in a different jurisdiction. I can't help but wonder if that didn't play a role in her reason for moving to a new jurisdiction. I question why the father would hand over this child knowing this. I don't know anything about him or that situation. Did this child have anyone on his side? Anyone? And I didn't, I didn't want my son in foster care. I know I'm supposed to feel sorry for her right now, but I got nothing. I think the display of maternal emotion is a tactic too. She wants people to think she's like every other mother. She is not. I don't think anybody would. If there was a court order that said you are not allowed to have custody of Timothy. I'm not talking about a custody agreement. I'm talking about a court order that says you can't have custody of Timothy. Uh, my understanding of the, the order that you're talking about, um, it wasn't that I couldn't. It's just that I didn't get custody that time. Oh, no, no. <laughs> This piece, too, is minimized, shifted, twisted. The lawyers now have to talk to the judge. The jury is excused. So this next part takes place outside of the presence of the jury. Notice how when the jury leaves, her maternal emotional displays go out the door, too. And the reason the jury is excluded here is that there was a previous hearing during which it was agreed that the details of the previous order in respect to parental rights would not come in because it would be more prejudicial to the accused 
than probative. And this judge made an order about this area of evidence. And she knew the order was actually made for her benefit. And she just violated that order. Here's part of the discussion about that. Thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, submit to the court that uh, the way that those questions were just answered, it was a, it was really just a very simple yes or no question. We covered this, and Ms. Maynard was present when we covered this, and the court was very limited in what it wanted me to ask when I asked that question. And she tried to explain it away by saying that she was then offered a chance to take custody or have the child go into foster care. We know that's not true. We know, and I think that gives me fair game at this point to ask her, isn't it true that you were actually subject to a petition to terminate your parental rights, and the only way that was withdrawn was because you agreed to give up and not have custody of them. Sure, John. May I ask my client a question? Did you under did you hear the conversation we had about the custody situation and, and the judge's ruling on that? Yes, sir. What did that what did you think that meant? What do you think his ruling on the custody question, whether you could have legal custody of your child meant? What did you think that meant? Could you rephrase that? Because I, I didn't interrupt that conversation, but while y'all are having that conversation, I mean, my understanding of the exit order, the order you're talking about, was not the way it's been characterized. And okay. I mean, from what Mr. Roberts just said, that was not my understanding of, of how that, that case ended. Translation. Give me another second to think, and I didn't understand, so it's not my fault. Remember, she scored super high in her law exams. She knows how to read an order. She knows what happened with the custody issue. She knows what happened in this court. She does what she wants anyway, and pretends she didn't understand. So, all right. So, Your Honor, my response is this: I, I want that that conversation because I want the court to have an opportunity to determine for itself if my client understood the instruction. Clearly, she did not. Clearly, her the way she processes the information is different, and she did not understand that she was not allowed to go into those other details. Uh, quite frankly, she sat right here and she heard Your Honor say, "This is how far we're going to go." This was clearly a, a yes or no answer. The rest of that 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 conversation, those those responses, were were not. Were, I I would agree with, with people were not in keeping with the court with the spirit of the court's order. They didn't get a lot of detail, but they clearly weren't in keeping. I would suggest, Your Honor, that my client be be re-explained the limitations of her conversation on that issue. And the valid judge, just because the witness decided to answer the question how she wanted to answer the question. That's like saying, well, I want to take back the answer now because I don't like what, it, what, what happened when I answered it. That, that's, 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 it's not fair. It's not fair to the prosecution. She's a law student. She just sat up here and explained how she graduated second in a class in law school and passed this bar the score of 182. She sat through this entire trial. She's been taking notes. She's been actively participating. She's trying to answer the questions the way she wants to to get her point across, plain and simple. And the court's order couldn't have been any more explicit that it was a yes or no question about isn't there a court order prohibiting you from having custody of the kids? I get to come back and explain now why she's sitting here saying that she thinks the order said, well, whatever you want custody back, if you want to take custody or the child goes into foster care, you can do that. Just to kind of put a bow on this and clarify things, Ms. Vander Ark, is it true that the last custody order from Oklahoma that involved Timothy indicated that you are only to be allowed supervised parenting time? That is correct. Um, you talked about, Mr. Johnson asked you about the motion sensors, and I'm not sure we got like any real sense of clarity about the motion sensors. Um, when we're talking about motion sensors, we're talking about ones that would um, not only go off if, if there was motion, that's what a motion sensor is, obviously, but would give some type of audio alarm, right? Uh, some of them did, yes, sir. And um, Timothy had very sensitive hearing, didn't he? I was not aware of that, no, sir. That's When Paul said that yesterday, that puzzled me. Mother of the year has no idea that her son is sensitive to sound, and the story's going to change anyway. You didn't know about that? You didn't know he had surgery to put tubes in his ears? I was there for the surgery for his tubes, but no, I mean, it was, at least my experience with Timothy was half the time he didn't hear what you were saying. So, um, did you know that he found it d discomforting when that when those noises happened? Did you know that that was, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, that was that was a punishment too for those noises to be going on? No, sir, I did not. Um, it, it's he was autistic, right? He was on the autism yes, spectrum? Yes, sir, he was on the spectrum. 
loud noises, disturbances, things like that. Those are troubling for folks with autism, aren't they? For some of them, but he never, I mean, he, he liked to listen to his tablet extremely loud. Um, and I remember, because um, little man, sorry, I'm trying not to say his name. Yeah. Um, you know, when we have thunderstorms, it, sometimes it would freak him out, and it didn't, things like that didn't bother Timothy at all. And Timothy sat with me, okay, go ahead and judge me or laugh at me, but when I, before the PTSD, I used to watch, when I watched college football, I would scream at the television. Come on. She's injecting other stuff here. I suppose it could be argued it's in support of her point, but a simple answer could have sufficed. And the remark, oh, go ahead and judge me. Just before she says she watches a sport and yells at the television, you know, a relatable thing. Don't judge her for what she did to her kids, but okay, go ahead and judge her about the relatable thing. On the witness stand, she's playing this game. She's practiced at this. It's, hey, I'm like you, so I can't be that bad. Yes, you can. Every play, offensive, defense, that's just who I am. And um, and Timothy was right there with me hollering at the TV. So so the, the alarms didn't bother him at all? I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, they they bother people, probably some, everybody, but I, but they didn't. It wasn't, he wasn't overly sensitive to it. Right, because it begs the question, if the alarms don't bother him, what's the point in having them, right? Yes, sir. She agreed with him there. The implication being that the purpose of the alarms is to bother him. And they were there as part of a disincentive for him to do the things he wasn't supposed to do. It was to let us know he was doing it too. Right. That way we knew what was going on. But it was, it was supposed to also be, you're yes. not supposed to be doing this and we know when you're, you're going to be doing yes. this, right? It was, it was so he knew we would be notified. And the, the doing this that we're talking about is coming out of the basement area at home, right? Coming upstairs in the middle of the night, yes, sir. Coming upstairs in the middle of the night? Yes, sir. So why have the alarms on him at any time other than the middle of the night? And why have the alarm on the closet and not the entrance to upstairs? And why attach alarms to his body? We're going to find out. So, so these would only be active at night? I only turned them on at night, yes, sir. Emphasis on I blame somebody else. So there's no text messages in there about turning on the motion sensor during the day so we can't come upstairs? I, I mean, I don't recall it, but... But you would, if those are in there, you would agree with me then that you were using the motion sensors to keep him downstairs even during the day, right? It, I mean, if it happened occasionally, I'm do, just... Do you remember the text exchange about turning off the alarms so that he can go to the bathroom and then turning the alarms back on after he's done going to the bathroom? Do you remember those? That was read the other day? Vaguely, yes, sir. Well, I, I'm sure you remember them from being read the other day. Do you yeah. remember sending those text messages? No, sir. No memory of those text messages? No, sir. And you're talking, there's, are you talking motion sensor or there was, there was I'm one. I'm talking motion sensor right now. Okay. The motion sensors are still, that's not, that it, that's different. You're talking about a, a, it was actually for a bike alarm, like for somebody stealing a bike, I guess it was. And you, that was the one that, that was, that you were referring to. The motion sensors that we've been talking about are posted in the house and those don't get turned. Those didn't need to be turned on or off. I see. So the motion sensor with the alarm is the one that was outside. Is that what you're saying? The motion sensor with the alarm, the, the one that makes noise, was not one that was in the house? No, they were up, up on the stairs. There was, there was a personal one that you could attach to whatever you wanted to. Right. There was one of those, and then there were several on the stairs. I see. Okay. And the purpose of the one on the stairs one was to make sure you didn't come upstairs? In the middle of the night, yes, sir. Right. And the ones to, and you actually, the ones that you could attach to a thing, you actually attached to a person, didn't you? Occasionally, yes, sir. Like it's nothing. Normal. Let's talk about the cameras then. Um, well, I guess let me ask you this question. So the motion sensor goes off, the alarm goes off, maybe it doesn't go off, maybe it's not one of the ones that have, have an alarm on it. So what? How, how is that a deterrent, or how is that a, a punishment to Timothy? That wasn't meant as a punishment, it was to let us know so we could go make sure that he was, you know, he wasn't wandering around, he wasn't getting into taking batteries apart and taking other, th messing with stuff that he shouldn't have been. Offender 101. Be sure to inject vilifying remarks about the victim at every opportunity. So you wanted to restrict his movements and you wanted to know if he moved out of the basement area whenever the motion sensors were on. Yes, sir. And the cameras are, I, I think you testified that the camera, at least initially, you put the camera in place in Gabe, in G's room 
to make sure that he wasn't running around without his clothes on, right? Yes, sir. When he was a toddler, he would strip down. How does putting a camera in his room to show him running around restrict him from doing that? Well, it doesn't restrict it. It was to let us know that he was doing it. And you have a problem with him running around? He wasn't potty trained. wasn't potty trained. I see. But otherwise, if you're potty trained, it's okay to have your children running around naked? No. No. You wouldn't want to have a child running around your house naked, would you? No. You wouldn't want G to see his brother running around naked, would you? No. Then I'm wondering why the text message that you sent to um, Paul about about Timothy making a mess in the garage was that he had to clean the garage without anything on below the waist, and then he could stand against the wall without anything below his waist. I don't remember that, sir. I'm sorry. You don't remember that text message? No, sir. Okay. Interesting. Not remembering is not the same as not having done the thing. Just wait, though. When she wants to defend herself or vilify the victim or blame someone else, then she remembers fine, just fine. And I don't have to tell you, there's a name for the punishment being described here. Such a thing is designed to degrade and humiliate in an intimate way, to crush the spirit of the victim, to cause profound pain, to make him acutely aware of his powerlessness in the situation. Take a look at, this is from the larger text messages, this is all the text messages between you and Paul, it's a few hundred if not thousand pages. Uh, Take a look at, this is page 5783, Mr. Johnson wants to reference the, te- this, the blue is your text messages. Can you read that for the jury, please? The blue one says, my, big, my bigger issue is that you said you checked every minute or so, but checking on the camera would have told you he wasn't listening. I'm not absolving him of responsibility by a long shot, but there are reasons the cameras are in place. And what time was that sent? Uh, 4.14 p.m., it looks like. So at 4.14 p.m., you're upset with Paul because he's not watching Timothy Every minute on the cameras, right? If I remember correctly, that particular day, yeah, he said he was going to check. That that wasn't, I didn't expect him to check every day, but there were days that were much more challenging. The answer requires a yes or no. But will she do that? Interesting what she remembers and what she doesn't, eh? And what is the essence of her explanation that no one asked for? minimizing about the expectations she put on Paul, a way of rebutting what the prosecutor is alleging and again injecting a negative about the victim. Some days were more challenging. Every parent out there knows that some days are more challenging than others, but we don't do what she did. This also shows she was directing Paul. When it suits her, this direction to Paul is about looking after Timothy. And when it suits her, the bad behavior was Paul's idea or Paul's doing. I'm not saying Paul was innocent here. I am saying she was the parent. She had power and control and made sure that she kept that power and control and wielded it. And that was when I asked him to keep a closer eye on him. Where is the text message that describes what the challenging incident was that day? I don't know, sir. I mean, there was, it was, there was a lot of challenging incidents. Yes. Living with the mother from hell would create a lot of challenging incidents. But she's just going to keep blaming the victim. Have you seen any shame here? So far, I've seen fear for herself, anxiety for herself, pity for herself, anger and frustration at the prosecutor, contempt for her children, defiance of court orders, pride, but no shame, no remorse. Going upstairs? No, sir. Going upstairs was okay during the day? Um, as long as that is, he was being monitored, yes. You talked about, we, we talked about the autism already. You talked about a number of other issues that, um, that Timothy had. Bipolar, ADHD. Were there some other ones? Sensory just, processing. Disorder. Sensory process. So he had the same disorder that you did. Yes. The sensory processing <coughs> disorder. Um, but there's different, it's, there's different manifestations of it. 
He had the one where his senses being overloaded didn't have didn't make a problem for him. Is that what you're saying? His was he was more hyposensitive, which means he didn't he didn't react the way a typical person would, as as far as less of a reaction. Um, there was a, a time I was told about it when we still lived in Oklahoma. Um, I guess he was being given a bath and he fell and and hit his jaw, and they didn't he didn't say anything. He wasn't he didn't say he was in pain. Well, I guess he went to someone's bedroom and my oldest son brought him back out and he had completely bitten through his tongue and not said anything. So he, he did not react as much to stimuli as most people do. There's hypo and hypersensitive and he was hyposensitive. I'm going to ignore for a minute that I don't believe her words anyway. When the issue of his sensitivity to stimulus was brought up before, instead of saying this, she talked about yelling at the TV when sports were on. But let's say he was hyposensitive. Isn't that all the more reason to be careful and to be attentive? Isn't it more reason not to give an ice bath or force feed him anything, never mind hot sauce, or zip tie him or shackle him? Not that that would ever be okay under any circumstance. If he's hurt or sick and wouldn't complain, then no one would know. And that would be dangerous. And when this child who doesn't complain finally does complain and says he's hungry, would that not be more reason to be attentive and responsive to his needs? More reason to feed him or comfort him? None of what she did is okay under any circumstance, but her excuses in wriggling out of it don't fly the way she would like. And do you know which children don't cry? Those who have suffered this sort of treatment. They learn that crying or complaining can make things worse. They learn that nobody is coming to help them anyway. Nobody was coming for this boy. It makes it all the more heartbreaking. And is there medication for that that you take? Not that I'm aware of. I don't. Uh, do, do you go to counseling for it for, for you? Or did you go to counseling for, for you? Not for that, no, sir. Um, for any of your other issues, though? I have over time. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time. Um, but in fact, the entire time Timothy was in the state of Michigan, you never took him to a counselor or a doctor to address any of those issues, did you? No, sir. I didn't have insurance, the insurance information. They have already established that she had an income. Even she isn't saying that the lack of insurance was about money. She's saying she didn't have the insurance information. You work in the law. Demand the ex produce the information or go get new insurance for the boy. She presents the excuse like there's no other way around it. Like she's helpless. She could spend the time, the money, and the energy for instruments of harm and ways to inflict harm, but golly gosh, expenditure of those things to get his insurance information was just too hard. Give me a break. You didn't reach out to any resources in the community that might have been available to help, did you? I I did actually. Yes or no? Did you reach out to any resources in the community? Which ones? I contacted DHHS about uh, getting on Medicaid, but they said that because he had other insurance, that would be primary, so we still had to have that information. Did you reach out to Community Mental Health, or Health West, I guess it's called now? I didn't. I wasn't aware of it. I didn't. I, I hadn't heard of Health West until I started working in the courthouse. Right. You worked in this courthouse in the county that you live in for at least the entire summer, as I recall correctly, you, you, and you never knew that we had a, a, a mental health agency here, here in Muskegon County? I didn't realize that's what it was for. I, I honestly, I didn't think about it. I re- the only, she said a true sentence there. Did you catch that? I didn't think about it. Yep. As far as resources go, the only thing that I thought about was DHHS for things like Medicaid and food stamps. Mr. Johnson asked you about the alarms on the doors. And you, your, your response to him was that the alarms went on the doors about three weeks before Timothy passed away. Is that correct? Somewhere in there. That was approximating. Somewhere it. in there. Okay. You can look up the Amazon history on my phone. Here, look at this proof I'm offering instead of something else. And it's still an admission. I did this bad thing, but only for about three weeks. As if that makes it okay. This is just about the alarms. 
the starvation went on for a lot longer. If a person has water but no food, it can take a couple of months to die of starvation. That's with zero food. We know he was getting some bread, stealing food, that sort of thing. At one point, he was so desperate, he ate frozen chicken nuggets. So this horrendous treatment was sustained over a period of time. And starvation affects the brain, which would lead to cognitive problems, irritability, circadian rhythm disruption, and depression, among other things. Prisoners of war can expect better treatment than what this child got. Oh, I'll do one better than that. This is page 3932 of the text messages from you. Could you go ahead and read that exchange for the jury and the date, please? Uh, did he say miraculously? No, I was, I, This is huh? Paul's response now, right? Yes. No, I was emphasizing because I turned on the alarm, yet he slipped past. Um, that's not good. We need to put up the other two alarms tonight later on. Hmm. That's the motion sensors. But you referred them to the alarms. <coughs> yes, sir, I did. Right. And that was That's in... what we called them. That was February. February. So that was motion February. sensors. Right. Months before he died. Yes, sir. You just mixed up what an alarm or what a motion sensor is? Yes, sir. That's what I, call. I called them alarms. I didn't call them motion sensors most of the time. Mm -hmm. This one's a little bit longer exchange, but if you could read 3996 for me, please. Just this page? Nope. The whole thing that's stable. <clears throat> uh... Is it snowing at home currently? KK, Timothy apparently ate my Pop-Tarts a few days back. Not anymore. Uh, are you kidding me? When did he do that? He said he doesn't know the exact day. Um, that's a bunch of BS, and how did he do it? Did he sneak down to the bathroom? He says it was before we had the other alarms. Um, I said that's not true because we've had those for over a week now. And you had Pop-Tarts in that box as of this past weekend or Friday at the very latest. That's uh, still the motion sensors. Okay, That's so like again, you refer to the motion sensors as alarms yes, right. there. And you're upset at that point because Timothy did some Pop Tarts. Is that my understanding of this text messages? In that case, because he stole them, Paul had, had gotten them for himself and because he stole them. In Timothy's situation, he was starving, literally. If she's concerned about this stealing, did she talk to him? Seek outside help? Or is her go to response harsh? punishment. This is about control and revenge. This is don't you dare defy me. Don't you dare challenge me. And that date, uh, I don't know if we wrote it or not, but you would agree with me that it was, oh, it's on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2022, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I wanted to take a look at 3702. Crossed out the parts that it's not really necessary for you to read, and just go ahead and tell the jury that date and what's on there. Uh, the date is January 24th. Okay. Okay. Uh, did Timothy have to wash his sheets? Question mark. Yes. I said, ugh, K, okay. pretty sure that is him pouting over the extra camera and motion sensors. Okay. So, and that was in January of 2022, correct? Yes, sir. So no problem referring to the motion sensor in January of 2022, but suddenly, come February, you mix up what an alarm and what a motion detector are. <coughs> yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Like I said, you can check the rooms on the street. You don't want to revise your testimony about when it was that you started using alarms on the doors? No, sir, because it's in my Amazon history when I purchased those. No. Ignore this evidence. Look at what I want you to look at. Mr. Johnson asked about Timothy being on medication for a lot of his issues. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, I think you said that when he came to you, you, he was like a zombie, right? Yes, sir. So you decided to take him off those medications, didn't you? No, sir, we didn't. We couldn't get refills. We well, had to. We had to get a, a refill through a doctor, and we didn't have a doctor. So she knows her child needs medication, and she does not do what's necessary to get him his medical treatment. Oh yeah, I heard the excuse. Did she talk to her doctor? I have a son. He's living with me. He's having these issues. What can I do? Did she talk to the doctor that Timothy had before? Did she do anything? to actually deal with that. Depending on what he was on, he might have gone through withdrawal as well. If his behaviors were so challenging, why do nothing to get him back on his meds? But it's all somebody else's fault. So your testimony wasn't that you took him off those medications? 
I said that I wanted to. You wanted to? Yes, sir. At least some of them because he, they were, I mean, he was, he was a zombie. It was horrible. You wanted to take him off the medications and it happened anyway because you can get refills for him. So you're actually happy that that happened. Not the way it happened, but he wasn't a zombie afterwards. But you definitely did not consult with the doctor before he did that. No, sir, because we ran out. But you, you, and again, didn't reach out to any, the, besides DHHS, didn't reach out to any resources in the community that might have helped you out with a child with such severe emotional issues that you have to use motion sensors and later alarms and locks on things. You, you didn't reach out for any resources before you just decided to stop him taking medication. Before we before he ran out, I, I wasn't aware of, like I said, I, DHHS is pretty much the main resource that I was aware of. Did you ever talk to somebody and say, look, I'm at my wit's end here. I did reach out to resources and talk to the judge that you were collecting for. I said, what can I do to get some help here? Did you ever do any of that? I talked to some friends at work. And they but I didn't come ask, up with an idea? I didn't ask for resources. I just vented to them and nobody suggested anything. I didn't ask. I guess that's everybody else's fault, too, because they were supposed to mind read and offer her solutions, and they did not. It's rather unusual the way this, this question was answered by you. She said there was one time that your mother-in-law saw Timothy. Yes, sir. One time. Yes, sir. Just the once. Um, after the stroke, yes, sir. Just once in six months was the only time. As far as I remember, yes, sir. That's what I believe. In fact, you went to great lengths to make sure that the grandmother, that's Grammy, that's the person Grammy, you refer yes. to as Grammy, right? Your mother-in-law. You went to great lengths to make sure that she wasn't allowed in your home, didn't you? I mean, that was just because the house was a mess. Did you have some type of tracking device on her to know where she was? Um, she, We had her phone under our, our phone plan, so I could look up on Find My iPhone. Because usually when she was, that way um, Paul wanted to know when she was coming to get Gabriel. Oh, gee, sorry. Uh, let me show you what's uh, page 4284. This is a lengthy exchange, but go ahead and read that for the jury. It's from, I believe, March 28th. Uh, soot, mm. uh, stupid thing writing on my watch. That should have said good. Uh, Grammy left home about 10 minutes ago. Hopefully she will not beat me there this time, but please have him ready to go. And please keep a very close eye on your messages. I will track her on the app as I head home. Um, hey, I need to, see, to make sure you're seeing these messages. And please make sure his new shoes are on him. Okay, thank you. And do not, do not, do not let Grammy inside. Exclamation point. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, uh, she will probably beat me there, but not by more than a couple minutes. You get clothes on too, please. Okay, uh, go ahead and take Gabriel outside and stand against the wall downstairs. You can, it says create the puppy too, but OL and then okay. She should be pulling up pretty soon. Okay, I got it. I'm glad you got it, but you better be outside. Uh, he's outside, do you want to say goodbye? That's Paul's response back to you, right? Yes, and I said, yes, I do, I'll be there in just a minute. Headed to the car now. How's it going there? He said, good, already taped the code rack. I think you stop there. Um, so you're tracking her movements on your phone as you're driving home. <clears throat> At stoplights, yes, sir. At stoplights. Did she think he was going to go after the phone use while driving? Seriously? I think she's more concerned about how people view her than she is about pretty much anything. Because you're worried that she's going to see a messy house. Yes, sir. And the solution to that is put Gabriel outside when so that he's outside when she gets there, right? Yes, sir. That was, I'm sorry, I misspoke. That was March 8th, right? Yes, so rather than his grandmother come into the house, in the, in the entryway of the house, in the middle of winter, not middle of winter, on March 8th, your solution was put Gabriel outside, make sure she doesn't come in. Do not, do not, do not let her in the house. Paul was outside Exclamation with point. I wouldn't end up never put him outside by himself. Paul was outside with him. Uh, please also have some decent clothes on in case I need you to bring a little man out. I'm hoping Grammy does not beat me there. It looks like it will be close. Uh, he said, okay. He said, I will tell you when to take him outside to wait for her. Just please make sure she doesn't leave until after I get there. I haven't been away from Gabriel at night since this all started, and I wanted to give him a hug and kiss before he goes. Since all this started, what was that? There's something else that was going on. Uh, okay, go ahead and go outside and wait for her. It shouldn't be more than a few minutes before she gets there. Just please don't let her leave until after I get there. Uh, she is almost there. Are y'all outside? 
I would like a response to that message. Um, question, question mark, question mark, question mark. You might need to make Timothy stand with his nose, it says, of against the front door on the inside. Please tell me that you and the child are outside. Seriously, no response. I am almost there, and I am more than a little upset at the moment. You're upset because at that point you don't know whether or not she's going to come into the house, aren't you? I was upset because I wasn't getting a response. That drives me crazy. It's a pet peeve. I hate not getting a response by a text message. Right. So you better have my child standing outside so his grandmother doesn't go inside. And oh, by the way, put my other child up against the front door with his nose against the wall, right? Because he was in trouble for something. I mean, I don't know what happened before that exchange. What would, what would, what, what would he do to get punished to have him make sure he's standing against the wall with his nose against the door? That's, that was one punishment. He would we'd make him stand against the wall with his nose. And the reason I had it against the door is because I didn't want him getting into anything. That way Paul had a better ability to monitor him. 4123. Um, also, please watch him, but please have Timothy get those two pumpkins off the front porch and into the trash can before Grammy gets there. Grammy isn't supposed to get there until 6.15, but she was early last time, so she might do that again. I hope not. Remember to bang loudly on the door three times, please. I will let Timothy know to listen from here, for you here, in the next few minutes. And Grammy may just beat me there again, which doesn't make me happy, but anyway. If she does, do not let her in the house this time. Okay. So that's three text exchange all within a couple of weeks of each other where you are absolutely consistent that you're the, the boy's grandmother's the boy's grandmother, Jean's grandmother, not come into the house. Right? Yes, sir. Three different text exchanges over time, meaning this was not a one-off thing. To the point where you're tracking her phone while you're driving home from work. Right? Yes, sir. I did. I only tracked it when I was stopped. I wouldn't do that while I was driving. But Now, Mr. Johnson asked you about the uh, leg irons. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. You said that those were... Uh, Timothy's leg irons, correct? Oh, no, I'm sorry, that they were, your testimony here today was that those were ordered by Paul, and Paul would use those on Legos, correct? Yes, sir. Actually, I don't think I testified about the Legos. I just, I know that he perked it, they were Paul's purchase. I don't think I actually testified about the Legos. I think that was a conversation with police. What difference does it make whether she said it to the police or the court? The issue is that leg irons were used on the victim. And yes, of course she would claim that she didn't personally buy them. Well, I'll leave the jury to the recollection of that, but I, I, I remember you saying Legos, and I'm not ashamed to admit the fact that I'm actually a fan of Legos, too, so that's why it stuck out in my mind that you just said it earlier today. Um, but to be clear, your testimony is those were Paul's, those were never used on Timothy, right? As far as I know. Yes, sir. Let's look at that top text message. The Wisely transaction is handcuffs and leg cuffs for Timothy from Amazon. Figured it would be okay to get those right away until we can talk about the sensors and stuff. If not, please say so and can cancel the order. Okay. I don't remember that. You, you don't remember that message? No, sir, I don't. I don't remember that. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Doesn't mean she didn't intend it. You really do have some memory problems, don't you? Yes, sir. That's common with PTSD. Yeah. Page 5829, if you could read that last text there at the bottom and then continues on to the next page. Uh, he has moved around, so he got the cuffs in front of him instead of behind him.